Hello everyone, welcome back to Arpita's Tech Corner. In this video, I will go through some possible scenario based Power BI related questions. I hope it will help you to prepare for your interview. Please check the description section for more details. Let's start with our question and answer. So our first question is, if you have a data set, then after importing, how will you find the data has some missing values or outliers? So to answer this question, first you have to follow some steps. You will say that I will import the data in Power BI and click on the transform data. Then Power Query Editor will be open. And in that Power Query Editor, under the View tab, we will find these three checkboxes or you can say the three features like column quality which helps us to identify the missing values or empty values if any error in the column value and the next is column distribution it will help to find the value distribution at a glance for each column and finally the column profile it will also help to find the detailed statistics about the data including outliers so be prepared for this type of question like if you have something like missing values outliers any impurity of this data set so what are the features we have to follow in power query editor column quality column distribution and column profile okay now next question we have two tables customer and sales the customer table has customer ID and customer name. Sales table has customer ID, order ID and sales amount. Then how will you create a single table? So in this case, you will say that I will use the merge feature of Power Query Editor to create a single table. First, give them the single line answer. Then you can follow different step by step process then you'll say i will import these two tables in power bi then i will go to power query editor using this transform data features then in power query editor we'll select this home and go to the, the combine and click on this merge queries as new okay so the key point is we have to select this merge queries okay under that merge queries we'll select merge queries as new then the merge dialog box will be open and select the joining key between these two tables. So here it is customer ID. So based on this requirement, I will select the join kind. For example, if I select left outer join, then the first table is a customer, then rows from the first table and matching rows from the sales table will be captured in the new merge table. Okay. So don't try to memorize, just try to understand if you have similar type of question, how will you answer? Okay, go step by step. Third question. We have huge student information. Okay, and it is distributed in three tables. But there is a good thing about that, that all the tables has the same number of columns. Okay, so then how will you create a single student table? For example, if you have three student table, table one will have 100, table two, 100 values, table three, 100 values. And each table has similar number of columns. That means each table has student name, student ID, and so on. Okay. In this scenario, you will say, I will use append feature of Power Query Editor to create a single table. Now you will say, how you can implement this append feature so in the similar way you just import two tables in power bi then go to power query editor then under this power query editor under this home table, you will select combine and click on append queries as new then append dialog box will be open and click on this three or more table and select all the tables and proceed okay the fourth question do you know the purpose of this dimension and fact tables? Normally, if you are freshers, so you can face this type of questions. 
Like in star schema data model, there are mainly two types of tables. One is dimension and other is fact. A dimension table holds the entity attribute level information. Okay. For example, customer, employee, product and the fact table holds the measure or fact related information. For example, sales, profit, discount, quantity, etc. Do you know why, why we are setting cross filter direction to both when there is a relationship exist between two tables? Okay. Now, now when we are creating the relationship between two tables and there is an option to select the cross filter direction. So why we are setting this option? Okay. It could be one to many or one to one or many to many relationships. Now in this case, you can refer Microsoft documentation. Now in Power BI project, each model relationship consists of a cross filter direction. Based on the requirement, I need to set up the direction and filters will generate accordingly. So I just quoted some of the information from Microsoft documentation. First is that single cross filter direction means single direction and both means both direction. A relationship that filters in both direction is commonly described as bidirectional. For one to many relationships, the cross filter direction is always from the one side and optionally from the many side. Okay. And for one to one relationships, the cross filter direction is always from both sides. So lastly, for many to many relationships, cross filter direction can be from either one of the tables or from both tables. And we can say that when the cardinality type includes a one side that filters will always propagate from that side. So when cross filter direction is set to both, another property becomes available. Okay, so I'm not going in too detail. You can refer my YouTube video to clarify all those things. Please check the data analysis in Power BI tutorial playlist from where you can find out this type of relationships explanation okay now the sixth question is the customer wants to display the total sales of a particular category on top of the dashboard irrespective of the category selection of any other visual that visual should not be changed how will you implement this okay so in this scenario you will say that i will create a separate sales measure for that particular category and using DAX function I can create this type of measure. So if you want you can use some uh, some of the code from your project okay just try to provide some example to explain in a better way and this measure can be used in a card view on top of the dashboard and irrespective of the category selection of any visual or slicer the card visual will not be changed. So here key point is that we are using the DAX formula and in that DAX formula we are setting the filter condition for that particular category. Okay. Seventh question. If the user needs a customized tooltip then what will be your approach? To get a customized tooltip a new report page can be created and set this report page as a tooltip option. How will you do that? For that you will say that to set the page as tooltip I will select the format page section and under that expand the canvas setting. Now I will select the tooltip under the type section. So when I am writing this answers for this question I have tried to provide some more detailed information okay. But in your interview you can explain in a very simple manner you can say that okay for that purpose i will select the format page option and there i will find out the canvas setting and from there i can select the type of this um, section as a tooltip okay so so our eighth question is have you used bookmarks 
any example so if you want you can provide some example from your project so to answer this type of question i have just tried to provide some example normally we are using this type of uh, features in our project so using that selection and bookmark features on the same page change the text of a button or implement the navigation so you can go through this video and you will get some idea about this type of real time problem okay now now ninth question is when we save a bookmark what are all the properties saved i found this question is very interesting so that's the reason i've just noted down here when you save a bookmark the following properties are saved first current page filters slicers visual selection drill location short order visibility of an object and spotlight or focus mode just uh maybe you are not able to remember this all eight properties but at least try to remember some of the important part okay the 10th question is i have one power bi file which has four pages okay on the first page there is one slicer i want to include this slicer on other pages also if the user selects any value from the slicer on the page then it should be reflected on other pages too how do you implement this to implement this there are some options first using sync slicer and next is using report level filter means like filters on all pages okay so like whenever you are copying one slicer to the other slice uh, pages then automatically you will get prompted that sync slicer do you want to sync that just click on yes then all the slicer will be in a sync condition so in this video i covered 10 questions now in the next video i will cover more if you like this video please share with your friend and colleagues thank you thanks for watching